they're going to offer up an, an evolutionary perspective for fitness and nutrition. And our first speaker is going to be Erwan McCor. He's Hi. the founder of MoveNet. MoveNet is um, more along the lines of a, a natural movement philosophy, and he's going to talk about some of the benefits for that and how it differs from some of our traditional training paradigms that we follow. Um, following Erwin, we're going to have Rob Wolf. He's a New York Times bestselling author of The Paleo Solution, The Original Human Diet. Um, he's one of the leading experts in paleolithic nutrition. That's where we are today, modern humans, uh, with astronauts uh, exploring space, uh, exploring uh, be, uh, new territories beyond our own planet, um, and growing our understanding of the universe. So this is absolutely fascinating and, and I believe a beautiful thing. And <clears throat> well, same time, same species, what I call the ESSSSS, like, well, <clears throat> it's <laughs> so uh, we have be become domesticated zoo humans. Our lives are divorced from well nature where it all started. Uh, we live a natural lives. Uh, we are fed a natural food. We don't move naturally anymore. And therefore, most of us have become chronically sick and depressed. We are suffering physically. We're suffering mentally. And the widespread uh, uh, chronic health disorders and the massive intakes of painkillers pain and anxieties can attest that. So it seems that so much comfort can be very stressful after all. You know? So not so fascinating or beautiful. Evolutionary biologists tell us that our ancestors were taller, they were stronger, they had greater muscle mass, greater strength and bone density than even modern athletes. So what did our ancestor knew that we don't know? What, what did our ancestor do that we have stopped doing? So NASA is trying to uh, define the best fitness programs for our astronauts so that they can stay fit on and off the planet. So while we you know, the ideal microgravity uh, fitness program has yet to be defined. Let's see uh, what exercise protocols or uh, countermeasures our brilliant fitness experts have come up with so far to combat uh, the modern predicament of sedentarity um, uh, in an Earth's 1G environment. More stationary activity. I call that hamster fitness, you know, and I believe that to me these modern uh, drills are probably the most primitive because they just reflect a profound ignorance of what the true natural movement potential is. You know, it's, it's, it's conventional mechanistic model that ignores the complexity of human nature and try to reduce everything to simple, regular, predictable, repetitive processes. So it's compart compartmentalized, sorry for the pronunciation, <laughs> uh, compartmentalized fitness. So, you know, it's about body part isolation, you know, uh, making a dichotomy between strength conditioning and cardio uh, respiratory condition. Um, uh, so I believe that this approach misses the most fundamental aspect of physical health and fitness, which is adaptive movement, movement and its interaction with a complex environment. So what's the outcome of such an approach? People are bored. Uh, from an evolutionary perspective standpoint, the, the, these uh, fitness programs we've seen before, uh, there are mostly quick fixes for mirror athletes expecting silver bullets. You know, it's cosmetic oriented. It's, it's about being beach ready. Uh, that's what people want. Um, so everything is predictable and regimented when you isolate muscle and stuff like that. So even like the, 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 the most natural part of who we are in movement becomes predictable and regimented. So basically it's more zoo. Uh, uh, it's not an expression of who we are. It, it becomes something that we have to do. It's like something we have to impose to, our, to, to us. It's external to us. It's like a chore. It feels like a punishment for being too, too lazy, too skinny, or too fat. So there's no interaction with the environment. There's no interaction with other humans. It's divorced from nature. It's divorced from the evolutionarily 
evolutionary nature in ourselves. It's not a, a pulling to our uh, primal brains and body, so it's hard to stick but to that kind of fitness. You know, so no wonder there is such a massive turnover of clientele in the uh, global gym world. What are the evolutionary fitness countermeasures? It's about rehabilitating the zoo human, and that's why I have designed the MoveNet Natural Movement Coaching System. Because it's not like you grab a zoo human, you plunk them in the well, and they're, they're going to thrive. Doesn't happen this way. Doesn't happen for any uh, animal that's really intelligent. Would would work for a snake? Doesn't work for a wolf, for instance, or for a human. So if you bring a leg extension machine in the woods, it's not going to make your workout more natural. Now, if right now in this very uh, room, we start to crawl under the table and then vault over them or jump from them, we start to lift and carry each other, here we go, you know, that's moving naturally. We, we have to train people where we find them. It's not like, hey, we tell them, hey, you just go in the woods and you be a, a natural, a jackass of natural movement. It's not going to work. So uh, uh, we need a program, we need a method. We, we, uh, there is a, a great emphasis in MoveNet on movement efficiency uh, uh, because uh, you know, movement can, is natural, movement is natural, but what's natural is not necessarily efficient. It can be naturally wrong, right? It's not necessarily optimally natural. Natural movement to become efficient, has, it's a much more of, it's much more mental game than people usually think. They think, oh, it's crawling, it's jumping, it's just physical. No, it's not. It's extremely mental if you want to move efficiently and safely. So we develop, we develop physical and mental qualities through the actual practice of movement skills, not the other way around. Okay. If, um, if uh, well, we say we take a, a pull-up, so people think, oh, that's a great upper body strength and conditioning drill. Well, not to me. To me, it's a climbing drill. But there is much more to climbing than just pulling your body up. There are plenty of other variations in climbing. Same goes with, with for instance, a, a, a box jump. You jump on the top of a box and down and up and down, so it's good for stamina and accuracy or plyometrics of the lower limbs. Yeah, right, OK. To me, it's just a jumping drill. And there's much more to jumping than just jumping on top of the box. Many more ways to jump. So by targeting uh, uh, physical qualities, there's no guarantee that will, you will actually develop movement skills. Now, if you, tar if you focus on movement skills in a proper manner, then it's 100% it's sure that you will also de develop all physical qualities and mental qualities. And for sure, mental qualities will focus alertness, reactiveness, because you, know, you run a treadmill or you, know, you pull, you use a machine, you can close your eyes, you can think about something totally different in a different place in a different time. Not when you move naturally, because again, it's a complex movement, compound movement, using the whole body in relation to a complex environment that sometimes is unpredictable. So there's no way you can think about something else. You have to be extremely mindful there's a real connection of the body and the mind, the mind to the body and the environment. It's not just body-mind connection, that's not enough. You need to connect that connectedness of the mind-body to your environment. You have to be immersed in the here and now. And my last question is, can we actually reinvent ourselves? So, moving naturally is our true nature. And I, I think the healthiest way to reinvent ourselves it is to uh, explore and experience what we truly are. And moving naturally, eating naturally, living naturally is the most powerful way to get there. That's my invitation. Thank you very much.